Ready to start, Peter? Yes. Okay, great. Um, we'll start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. This is the Contra Costa Paratransit Coordinating Council. Thank you all for being here. And um, Rita, would you like to lead us? Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, next, we'll do introductions, uh, starting with Kim. Is that okay? We'll start with the members of the PCC. Kim Ridgeway, AC Transit. Janet, Janet Bilba, City of El Cerrito. And Charlie Anderson from Western Contra Costa Transit. Tri Delta. <laughs> Tom Harris from Tri Delta Transit. <laughs> Janet Abelson, uh, what, representing West Contra Costa County. Rita Xavier, representing the Advisory Council on Aging from the county. Josh Sullivan, representing the Contra Costa Developmental Disabilities Council. Mm -hmm. Lori Reese Brown representing the City of Richmond. Emily Stevens, Independent Living Resources. And uh, let's staff. Peter, you want to go next? Peter Engel, CCTA staff. Irene Ortega, CCTA staff. And now we'll go to the audience. Do we have a, a handheld mic or? Sounds like it works. Othello Smith, Antioch, a candidate for the PCC. Beverly Smith, visitor. Uh, Ralph Hoffman, Senior Mobility Action Council, candidate for the PCC. I'm Chris Wasco. Just joining. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll go back. We'll we'll uh, come back up to the uh, committee. Michael Dowjelly, uh, East County Paratransit. Thank you. And um, next on the item uh, on the list is uh, public comment on items that are not on the agenda. If you would like to speak on an item that is on the agenda, uh, you can do so at the time we discuss that item. But this is for items of interest to, uh, to transportation that are not on our agenda. Is there anyone who's a member of the public that would like to speak on an item not on the agenda? Not seeing any, we'll move on. Um, and item number four is a summary of actions from our March 21st, 2016 meeting. And uh, this is for Approval, right, Peter? That's correct. Okay. So are there any uh, corrections to this item? If there aren't any corrections, is there a motion? I so move. Second. Okay. So motion by um, Rita, seconded by Michael. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. Uh, Lori is abstaining. You were, okay, Kim is also abstaining. Um, motion carries. Um, then the next item on the agenda is a consideration of new members. And uh, there were two applicants and uh, the subcommittee met uh, just now and um, I'll Matt, fell Madam Chair yeah uh, I think you skipped number five expiration of member oh terms. I'm sorry I did um, number five is expiration of member terms uh, which is an action item if you go to about the third piece of paper it shows the terms that are expiring this year which is of course 2016 
And so um, I assume that you've already contacted the people and they're all interested in uh, continuing. Is that true? Or do we need to ask now? We need to ask now. Okay, well, let's ask now then. Uh huh. I, I did want to ask briefly on page 5-2 if in the background paragraph, if that's 2015 or 16. 5 dash. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 2016. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. I The first sentence under, the first sentence after the, the, bold set type that says background. It says the following members of the PCC have expiring terms as of June 30th, 2015. It should have been 2016. Okay. Thank you. I was actually looking at a different page, which I believe, is that one correct? Would, I was looking at the one that shows the membership roster. Is that one correct? Is there yes, anything? that one's correct. That one's correct. Okay. Um, and uh, so according to that, the people whose terms are expiring are uh, from East County, Sharon, and um, from the Developmental Disabilities Council, Josh, and from the uh, Rehab Services of Northern California, Debbie Toth, who's not actually here, but have, have you asked her if she wants to uh, continue on? I have not asked her, but we'll find out. Okay. Should, in her she, absence? She can, she can, um, um. Should we just assume that she does? Let's assume that she does, and then, and then at the next meeting, if, I'll talk to her, and if she does want to, I mean, she can always resign at any point, so. Okay. That's, we could probably safely assume that she does. Okay. So, um, and Sharon, you want to continue on? Do you want to be um, continuing? Okay, great. And Josh, great. And then Debbie, we just talked about. So there are three, there are just three people whose terms are expiring. So um, I think what we want now is, um, if you're interested in doing it, somebody could make a motion to um, extend the terms of all three people. I would like to make a motion that we accept the generous offer of the three to continue and in absentia with Debbie. Okay, great. So I'll second. second it. Who is the second? Me. Ah, thank you. Um, and um, so um, let's vote then. All in favor of extending the terms of uh, Sharon, Josh, and um, Debbie. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Congratulations. <laughs> and um, and you'll talk to Debbie. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then now, having done item number five, uh, we'll go to the consideration of new members. And um, a subcommittee met uh, at 1.30 today. Uh, consisting of Kim uh, and also Sha uh, Sha uh, Ma Michael and myself and uh, considered uh, two candidates that are listed on your agenda. And um, the um, committee um, said that they would like to um, uh, consider and welcome um, uh, Pello is how I believe how, what you want to be called, right? Am I correct there? Yeah. Okay, Pello Smith, uh, as an East County representative, and I forgot if you said uh, uh, disabled or disabled in the disabled category, um, and um, that was the uh, that was the action that we recommend. So I believe that at this point the committee would take a vote. Okay, and so that's the recommendation of the subcommittee. Would somebody like to make a motion? I would motion. Oh, go, go ahead. And I'll second. Okay. okay, so Emily's making a motion. And who said second? Okay, Charlie said second. Okay, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 
Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, with that, we are on to a, um, an important item on this uh, agenda, and that is the approval of the 2016-17 allocation for the countywide transportation for seniors and people with disabilities, which is known as Program 15. And there's a, a lot of, most of our packet actually is the attachments for that. Uh, Peter, do you want to discuss that? Well, I'd certainly be happy to kick it off, and then I'll turn it back over to the subcommittee, subcommittee members who were there and um, took the better part of a day to, to meet with all of the, um, the operators that receive these funds and, and go through their applications. And again, I appreciate the time the operators spend on um, filling out the paperwork. It, it does really provide valuable information to us and knowing um, the number of clients you serve and um, kind of the issues that you're seeing out there. And it's, it's very helpful for the, I think the people that come later, uh, the operators that come in, come into the, the subcommittee later because they, they get the benefits of, of what the subcommittee hears from all the earlier groups that are kind of their issues and, and we can kind of share with each other, um, you know, you know, everybody's having that same issue this year. You know, it seemed like, it seemed like Dallas, this was one of the big issues this year that, that all of the, uh, operators are kind of facing and um, one of the things that we thought was interesting as well and and um, chair Abelson kind of brought this up was that all the operators kind of provide this this great service to the community outside of their core um, you know their their core idea and that is you know if they see somebody a, a disabled person on the side of the road that looks like they're having issues it sounds like most of the drivers are going to stop and kind of inquire and especially if it's somebody who they know and who, that they know is part of the system and, and just see, um, you know, if they, can, if they can help out in any way. As well as it also sounds like most of the operators provide some sort of emergency wheelchair, um, um, what's the right word, Trans, transport process. If somebody has a chair that's, that's broken down and it's during the normal operating hours, they can call dispatch and, and somebody will be dispatched out to help um, pick up that chair and take it home for them. So there's, there's some of those kind of extra things that that all the operators are doing that just seems like it's kind of above and beyond and, and was very helpful. Um, so this, this particular item that we're looking for is a resolution that will go to the authority in June and it is the um, allocations of funding from um, program 15. This year we're looking at, if I can find the figure here, um, give me one second. One second, one second. You think I work on these things all the time, I'd know exactly where the numbers are. Mm -hmm. um, a little over three and a half million dollars going to the uh, seven operators in the county. So it's quite a bit of fun, it's quite a bit of money. Um, um, it's always um, certainly beneficial and, and we're glad that we have Measure J to be able to provide funds to the both the ADA and the non-ADA um, transit providers in the county because they do perform a, a absolutely essential service for both seniors and disabled um, people in the community. So with that, I will turn it over to um, Josh and Janet and Rita and Vicki, who's not here. We're all on the committee. Am I leaving somebody off? I think that's it. I think so. I, before we move. Oh, Michael. Michael was on. Was Michael there? Oh no, Michael couldn't make it. He would, he didn't make it. That's right. Before we do that, should we uh, welcome? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sorry. Hello. You, yeah. yeah. It's hello, right? So, would you like to come and join us up here? And uh, next time we'll have a nameplate. <laughs> uh -huh. so, okay. So, so I, I'll just turn it over to the subcommittee mem committee members if there's anything you want to say about any of the applicants. I think this is the, I've been here 
this is either the ninth or tenth. This is the ninth one of these that I've done, and there's always there's always a question to somebody, and it's like, can you go back and kind of you know sharpen the pencil and do some things here and get it back to us? And I think this is the first year we haven't had to do that. So, mm -hmm. I'll I'll start out if if you want. Um, I've I've been involved in a number of these um, reviews, and partly I think the actual process was a matter of us figuring out what the process was or should be. And I think th this year it felt like it went, as you said, Peter, really smoothly. Uh, that um, it's, I, And I think it's a combination of when we, when maybe we really have the format in, in, to, in a good position now. And I also think that our operators have all done a, a really good job uh, in providing services to the people who need them. And um, so it's been, uh, I, th I felt this year was really refreshing that way, and I don't really have a lot to say as a result because I've seen the growth in this process. And um, it seems like the operators are all really doing their very best with limited resources, uh, and we always would like to see more resources, but um, unfortunately that isn't always, or in fact maybe it's never in our control directly. But So I would um, just like to start out by thanking all of the operators for um, the work that you all do. And um, I think most of them, maybe even all of them are, have representatives here. Maybe we could just sort of go th through that going down this way. So Kim, you represent AC Transit. And Bay Fair Transit. Okay. And City of El Cerrito. City of Antioch. <laughs> Try to transit. East County. When, when, we're we're East users. <laughs> oh, you don't do these. No, I just wanted just the operators. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's those are the operators that are here. The ones who are not here, let's see, San um, Pablo. San County, Pablo and County Connection. King County Connection are not here. Um, so um, anyway, those are that. So when we're talking about the various operators, that's who we're talking about, and uh, re they represent all areas of our county and serve all areas of our county in one way or another. So, um, Rita, you want to go next? Uh, yes. I, I didn't get, you know, the thing for the subcommittee before the meeting, so I didn't have a chance to read every little thing. And since then, I've studied the whole thing. <clears throat> I have just one paragraph under San Pablo, and the, it's page 753. It's the second paragraph, and it's about expanding service to Del Norte BART. And, and here it's saying that if we had a transfer system in place, for example, seniors traveling to El Cerrito Del Norte BART, station could take the San Pablo door-to-door -door shuttle to a transfer point and have El Cerrito Transportation pick them up. Um, San Pablo already goes to McDonald Avenue, Del Norte BART is about two more blocks, not much more than that. And it really, in my estimation, wouldn't make sense to have El Cerrito pick them up at McDonald Avenue and take them two blocks. And that would be at three times the cost to the rider, as San Pablo charges a dollar each way, and um, El Cerrito charges two dollars each way. So that'd be three dollars instead of a dollar. So I think instead of having a, a study done on that particular little thing, San Pablo should just extend it to Del Norte Park. Simple. And they can afford to do that. So could we um, have a, a list of these, the comments, such as the one that was just made, and then especially for the operators who are not here, uh, let them know what those comments are? Okay, that would be great. Okay, and the next member, Josh, you were on the committee? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would strongly recommend to any other um, 
PCC members definitely do it at least once. It was it was a really cool experience. Um, taught me a lot about how different agencies within our our diverse county are coming, you know, coming to the plate and meeting the needs of our citizens, riders, passengers, you know, whatever nominees. Um, and it was it was it was very it was a pretty awesome experience. So thank you. Okay, let's see. So then, in terms of the people who were there on this side of the room, were uh, were you there? No. Who Sharon? Were you there? No. no. I'm forgetting. That was it. Of the people who are here now. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything today? Michael? Just I wanted to ask for that page number reference again to 7 53. 7 53, thank you. So, which paragraph is it? It's the second paragraph. And then your comment is that they should just take them the whole yeah. San Pablo should just instead of transferring two blocks uh -huh. away from Bart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Peter will relay that comment. Great. Okay. So, um, are there any uh, comments from anybody here um, about anything related to this agenda item? <clears throat> And that would include the audience, by the way. No comments? Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay. A second. Okay. With that one comment? Okay. Okay, great. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. And um, again, I think it could be said, you know, it's a great, yeah, I think it was a great year. Um, and it was um, really nice seeing it uh, come together with the exception of financing, which is a separate issue. <laughs> okay, so the next item on the agenda is the election of chair and vice chair. And so, Peter, I'll turn that over to you. Okay, so it's that time of year, every two years. Um, so this meeting on the even-numbered years, we um, elect a new chair and vice chair. Um, as you all know, Janet Abelson is current chair. Michael DeJelly is the current vice chair. We're handing out slips for you. Um, our normal procedure, our normal process for doing this is is anybody can, um, can nominate somebody from the list of people that is on page 8-2, which is the, the, the last, the very last page of your packet. Um, the, the bylaw states that a person has to have, an, have attended um, at least half of the meetings, or more, I'm sorry, more than half of the meetings over the previous two years. So this list of people, and I'm proud to say, this is a pretty big list compared to what we normally get, so everybody's been attending the meetings pretty well. So mm -hmm. um, you can see the folks um, that are eligible to be chair. The left-hand column is um, consumers of service. The middle column is the operators, and the right-hand column is uh, agencies, social service agencies that, that are on the committee. So. Um, I guess we can have the floor opened up for nominations for chair, and then we'll do nominations for vice chair, and then we have a slip. Um, there's two slips I think each of you have, one for chair and vice chair. You can just write down your the person you want, and we'll collect those and count, count up the votes. So you'll take nominations? Yeah, so uh, let's first take nominations for chair. Madam Chair, I'd like to nominate Michael Dugelli for chair, if you're willing. Do we need a second for nominations? Uh, no. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in the 
absence of, I was going to nominate Janet, if Janet mm -hmm. would be willing to serve again, in which case I would not be interested in running for chair. Nomination. <laughs> then we nominate Janet again for another term. <laughs> Just that, I think she does an awesome job. <laughs> I could certainly support nominations on Janet. Thank you. <laughs> so, have you withdrawn? Yes. Okay. So the only the only nominee we have is Janet. Okay. I don't think we need to vote then. Yeah. I think Janet has just well, been reelected in the chair, but we do need nominations for vice chair, so we can take those at this time. Does the member need to be present to nominate? Usually, they because they uh, may or may not accept. I'd like to nominate. I'd like to nominate Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Another term, I think. Pretty consistent. <laughs> Status quo is nice. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else? So I guess we should just can. So we'll we'll take a vote to confirm that Janet will be the new chair, and or remain as chair, and Michael remain as vice chair. So all, those, all those in favor? We don't need the paper Aye. then? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Michael. <laughs> it's been great working with you. <laughs> um, please. In two years when I've matured, perhaps we might have a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next item on the agenda is the update on the development of the transportation expenditure plan. Uh, so at the special meeting we had, there was a request from the PCC to um, send some revisions to the language in the draft TEP as well as a request to increase the funding level um, based on a potential 30-year measure rather than a 25-year measure. Um, the comments were delivered to um, CCTA staff and presented to uh, the authority. The, the proposed funding level has increased from 3.3% to 4%. I know that we um, requested 5%, but they were able to increase it to 4%. So. Um, and then the revisions were um, were made as well um, at the request of the PCC in the language. So um, the status of the TEP right now is it has officially become a um, draft. Instead of a draft TEP, it is a draft proposed TEP. Um, the authority will have a special meeting this Wednesday after its regular meeting to make any final revisions. Um, to that and hopefully by the end of that meeting they will um, they will adopt it as the proposed TEP and release it to the cities um, for their review and approval and, and the cities in the county for their review and approval um, which is anticipated to take um, six weeks to six to eight weeks to take it to to get done and then at that point it would come back to the authority to make a final decision to ask the county to put it on the ballot. So um, this, may, this, this coming Wednesday is the big day that we've worked for over a year to get a TEP out. Um, and when I say TEP for those, it's transportation expenditure plan. This would be a new half cent sales tax measure um, for transportation projects. So that's the update I have. I, trying to answer any of your questions if you have any. Josh? So just um, just for the PCC itself, how much of a total dollar increase towards disability and senior um, rides is that seven-tenths of a percent? 
I think there's... You, you, you knew I was going to ask. We did. There's several answers, aren't there, Peter, depending on the number of years? I, let me give you a rough guess, but I, I got to put it in. I got to get my calculator out here. So it's it would be 0.7 percent of roughly 3.8 billion dollars. So does that help? But how many years is that? Depending. That's 30 years. 30 so years. so annually, then you'd have to divide mm -hmm. that by 30 years, and then that would be 2014 dollars constant dollars, so then inflation every year would in, would be on top of that. We learned at the um, at the subcommittee where we looked at the claims that, that Josh was very good at asking people to sharpen their pencils and he, all his questions were budget. He's a, he's a numbers guy. So I, I just wanted to in, in regards to, you know, maybe it's a pat on the back to PCC members, but your advocacy um, in this effort has increased, potentially increased taxpayer contributions by about $26 million. So, again, that's every that, that's yellow math. I mean, it really is over 30 years with different types of compiled interest, but that's that's something. Of course, more is always welcome. <laughs> Are there any further uh, questions or on this item from anyone? Okay. So hopefully we will know what, uh, at least what the authority, um, what the final authority uh, numbers are yep, if you are as early really, as Wednesday. If you're really um, if you're really looking for something to do Wednesday night, you're always welcome to come out to the meeting. Or if you're at home really bored, you can you can stream the meeting and just listen to it from your from your soft sofa at home. But I don't really recommend that to anybody. <laughs> I've done it here. <laughs> Sitting in my computer chair. Yeah. The meeting, the last couple of meetings have been very long. So what was it? Two weeks ago, Janet was, we, I think it ended at 11, and last yeah. year we, last week. I got week, home after last midnight, week we I got, know that. Last week it went till about 1040, so. Yeah. Oh, it was last, yeah, it was last week, I guess, that I got home after midnight. <laughs> I have a friend who's, um, senior civil engineer for the city of San Pablo. And he says the problem with listening, because he's new to San Pablo, the problem with listening to that is he doesn't know who's speaking. And I said, well, I know everybody now, so I know who's talking. <laughs> so, but I'll be there Wednesday night. Here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else then? Um, okay, so that is, that's just an information item. And um, at our next meeting, we should be we should actually know for sure. I think what what the uh, outcome was. So item number ten is the next item. It's the service review advisory committee report, and there was a meeting um, on May the third. And um, the first item of interest is um, that. Um, the, cl the claims that we just heard ourselves, um, there's a similar process, only it's for the um, Alameda County Transportation Commission paratransit plan. It goes to the whole, um, well, I, in a way it's somewhat the same, only I think it's a little more rigid the, um, re to review the uh, paratransit plan. Uh, that is created. Kim, you know more about the specifics of that plan. But anyway, so the SRAC moved uh, approval and passed approval of that proposed claim. Do you want to add anything on that item, Kim? Because I know you're quite familiar with it.
Okay. That so that did happen. Um, and my then the next item on the then it um, they have a, an unusual process whereby the agency that they're reporting to, which is called the Service Review Committee, which is made up of the representatives of the general managers of AC Transit and BART, um, vote on that on the approval after the SRAC does. And so that happened and they did approve it and then um, the meeting of the SRAC resumed. Um, and um, the next item of interest was the uh, discussion of the emergency action guide for East Bay Paratransit. And um, there's been a lot of work done, which I think has been really interesting as a participant in some of it in figuring out if there were that big emergency, um, what would we do to move people around, especially people who uh, use paratransit? And um, I, I really do personally think that um, the agencies that were involved in this are to be commended because I know we've had some emergencies in the past uh, and I can't now remember the details of them, but I do know that um, it seems like one of the emergency was one of the systems went down, I think. Uh, this was a while back. And um, so they were unable to, to run the um, uh, record keeping of the computer record keeping for the paratransit reservations. Do you remember that? They, I do. <laughs> And so there, are, there have to be, plan, you know, so it's really a good idea to do planning around what do you do when things are wrong? And um, because it's really important to people to be able to get around. So a lot of work was done, a lot of work was done in that area. And I um, think we need to thank all of the people involved in that. And you were one of them, weren't you, Kim? <laughs> You can tell by the smile on your face. <laughs> Do you want to add anything on that? Please. Just the the guide itself is not is not only what paratransit will do in emergency, but there was a lot of work put in on personal preparedness. So there's a full on page about what you can do to take care of yourself in an emergency and take care of family in an emergency. Um, the really cool thing about the guide itself um, also talks about what to do, what to expect from East Bay Paratransit. So if you're on the vehicle, what to expect. If you've been dropped off and you need a return ride, what to expect. And of course, emergency numbers as well as additional resources for people to review in the, in the time where there is no emergency. Would it be worthwhile at some point for this group to have a presentation specifically on that? Would the group be interested in that? Okay. Could you arrange that, Peter, when the agenda is light enough to? Because it really was, it really was um, interesting, and it also, um, as a user of that system, made me feel gave me a great deal of comfort that um, everything had been looked at, it could be, and, and planning had been done to minimize the impact of whatever uh, emergency there might be. Um, so, um, that, so anyway, so that was the next item, and that, that was, those were kind of the main items that were discussed at that meeting. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Then the next item on the agenda is the Senior Mobility Action Council report. And who gives that report? Um, unfortunately, I was not at the last meeting because I couldn't get any transportation there. Is that fitting? I asked, well, usually I go with Vicki, and she didn't go. And I asked some other people, and they weren't going. So... I didn't go. Um, I'm assuming that they probably continued to talk about volunteer drivers because they had brought up, at the previous meeting, they had brought up something about getting people from Contra Costa County to other counties for medical visits. 
and they were talking about volunteer drivers and working on that, trying to get, you know, some kind of a system set up. But I don't really know what else they would have discussed at that meeting. And I'm going Monday because Vicki told me today. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the next item on the agenda is future agenda items. And that would be for our um, July meeting. Is that correct? That's correct? Okay. Does anybody have any agenda items? We could do that one on emergency preparedness uh, if we don't have any, too much else. I'm not hearing anyone say. Do you, do you have other I items? I would say yeah, emergency preparedness. Sounds great. Okay. And I think it could be applicable to all areas of the county. And. Um, and useful to uh, consumers too. And there were kits that were given out, uh, I remember, that were really interesting and helpful and they're made up of things that you could replicate anywhere. And do you have lists of the, do you have lists of the items that are in those kits? Okay, because then that could be passed out and then Anybody who wanted to could, in fact, create their own packet, you know, of materials. Um, okay. Um, is there any news to share? Okay. Uh, this is as much for Peter as well as a, uh, perhaps an incentive for others. Uh, you, you recently let us know, Peter, about vacancies available on PCC. And I just wanted you to know that I put out feelers internally asking, you know, because a lot of our staff have contact in the community and said, does anybody know anybody? And nobody came up with anything initially. What I suspect is somewhere down the road, the light will go on. <coughs> but I would encourage everybody to do that so we can fill some of these. It's it just, when I look at that, I, it, I find it hard <coughs> to believe that there's not somebody who'd be interested in a, in a, in a benefit to this body. So. I, I would throw in that I'd like to do a little bit of vetting for the gentleman in the back um, who introduced himself earlier. I think you're you're currently attending to meet your membership requirements. Is your your intention? Sure. Sure. Um, so, Mr. Wasco, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, okay, are you listening? Yes. Okay, thank you. I live in Carmel Pines up in Walnut Creek, and I'm uh, kind of disabled or uh, disability, and I've been, uh, I've been there for a long time, uh, going to school up at uh, near uh, Lona Vista, Dull Dead, and, and it helps uh, disability people. And Chris, can I, so when it comes to transportation, um, you're kind of a, a well-known local community member. Um, I heard Bart recognized you for something a while back ago. Well, I think it was when I worked at uh, Action Photo Service. We had uh, Charlie Hamilton. He passed away a long time ago. He got me, uh, there were a lot of reporters asking me questions about what's going on and how do you, in the, uh, I was in the newspaper about uh, 1986. That was a long, long time ago, in 86 of, uh, of December. And, and so when we talk about using um, different types of transportation for adults with uh, disabilities or just anybody with a disability or a senior, how many times around the world have you traveled on BART? F 14. 14, mm -hmm. 14, 14 times around, around the world, world on BART. So you're pretty... Pretty low, pretty good expert when it comes to that. So thank you. So anyway, let me uh, let's see. But that's a long time ago, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I've been on transit, uh, like on buses, like our, uh, I think on number four bus that takes me to the BART station up to Walnut, Walnut Creek BART. So uh, anyway, I enjoyed being uh, in the transportation where I am right now going to school and going to work too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, is there any other 
I think we're in their news to share, right? Any other, any other news to share? Okay, then our next meeting date is on July 18th. And um, thank you all for coming.